this is another great episode of the film review. Black Eyes Chronicles Massive. I'm standing here with the world renowned, the globally known Tommy oh, Davidson. You're killing me. So your career started in 86. Yeah, okay. 86. Okay. Yeah. So when did you know that comedy was what you were destined to do? Actually, I think it was the first time I went on stage because I, I wasn't expecting to be on stage. Okay. Like a friend of mine just asked me to try it mm -hmm. at a club he worked at. Mm -hmm. I was cooking in the kitchen. Were you? I, yeah, I had a job in the kitchen and I was an assistant chef and I worked real hard since I was 15 to get the job. So mm -hmm. I was really happy about that. And he said, you're wasting your life because you need to do comedy. I said, what am I doing comedy? What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. He said, come down to this club, take the mic and just say something. Mm -hmm. And like from the first time I said something, people laughed. Mm -hmm. I never looked back. From the first time I touched the mic, mm -hmm. it was like it was already preordained. So your career choice at that time was to be a chef. Yeah. That's what you love. Yeah. So you can cook a mean... Well, you know, I, I, I think I can. Okay. Know, ask the people who eat my food. You know? well, what's your, what's your what's specialty? Mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do a, I do a, a cream tortellini, salmon cream tortellini mm -hmm. thing that's nice. I do I do a, a lemon pepper mm -hmm. chicken wing that you can't beat. Mm -hmm. That's the world now. So is a restaurant owner in your future? I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. There's so much things I want to do, but that's among one of them that I would love to do. So let's talk about the politics of Hollywood mm -hmm. for a minute. Mm -hmm. You've been in it since... 26 years. 26 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there something that is um, unfair about the politics in Hollywood? Um, I'm not going to say unfair. I'm just going to say a challenge. Mm -hmm. you know, a challenge. I think the thing that's changed over the last probably... 18 years in the business, but especially over the last probably five years, is the networks and the studios have gotten a little bit more picky about what they're going to allow black creators to do. Okay. It kind of reminds me of the old Negro Leagues, mm -hmm. you know, where your whites own the white league. Mm -hmm. So it's really their choice mm -hmm. to bring black players into the league. Mm -hmm. It's like the whites own the studios, they own the networks, and it's really up to them to get us involved. They really don't have to. Okay. You know, and so right now they're really not wholesale. Okay. It's not like a lot of new people, new young black up and coming directors or actors are getting, you know, greenlit to do big movies. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a little more difficult than it was, let's say, from '93 through about year 2000. Okay. You know, you had all those movies, Strictly Business, Booty Call, Friday, mm -hmm. Jason's Lyric, New Jack City. I mean. What happened to those movies? Mm -hmm. Those movies can still be happening, right? right? And there's mm -hmm. people that there's there's people that want to do those movies. So I could tell in your stand up that you're a little bit angry. No, no, I'm not. Not angry, angry at all. No, I'm, I'm not angry it. about it. Yeah, so, I'm just passionate about the truth. Because you know, yeah. <clears throat> the truth of what we have had to go through mm -hmm. can be very. Uh, cause it can anger. make you anger. It can bitter. make you angry. It can make it you bitter. bitter. If you don't, but it p depends on your perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, like you, can, we can choose to look at slavery and be bitter, but it's just something that we can't change. And the only thing we can change is our perception of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and learn our lessons from it, and then mm -hmm. move our people forward from there. Mm -hmm. Like that's not going to help. If we were really bitter, then we'd be fighting with white people right now. That's true. We would be like yeah. the rise of the planet of the age. Yeah, it'd be school. like, so to speak. I mean, we'd be, we'd be <laughs> Molotov cocktail and everything, but that's not us. That's not mm -hmm. who we are. We're a very, we're a very spiritual group. Very spiritual people, people, Africans people. in general. Right. Where we right. come from culturally, we come from a communal social culture mm -hmm. where we depend on each other for our success. Right. Whereas they come from a, a sort of a, a uh, uh, narciss Europe. Well, narcissistic. Right. Where it's all you know, about where it's all the, about the individual. And the hunt. Yeah, it's about the individual. Mm -hmm. Us, we're about community. Mm -hmm. It's just has it doesn't have to do with race or anything, it has to do with cultural differences. Mm -hmm. So once we realize who we are culturally because we got removed from that for so long. So once we realize that's where we are, mm -hmm. then it's gonna be no big deal. It's gonna be no big deal. Yeah, but we're still working towards that kind of awareness. So how do you determine how far you can go? with the audience member mm -hmm. because last night you really oh, went I had in one. I had one tonight too oh yeah but yeah. you really went in on this guy like how do you determine how far you can go with the audience um, I, I have an insight meter 
you know, as long as I'm not too offensive to the person, I don't isolate them, and I, you know, I don't, I don't put them down, but I mm -hmm. sort of make them part of the party, mm -hmm. you know, and then I'm vulnerable too. I mean, if somebody takes a shot at me, I laugh too. Mm -hmm. So I just make everybody, I make it one big party. Mm -hmm. And if somebody got singled out, they know I'm throwing it out there that everybody laughs at all the same things. Mm -hmm. So it's just me thinking out loud for everybody else. Well, I, I think it took probably about a couple of months. And once I got the cadence, and once I, I realized that he would pause and, 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 and sort of make things sound important, and, and, and some things that weren't important, you can make sound important. And once I found those cadence and, and the differences in his voice, I was able to emulate that. And usually when I watch him long enough, I can actually do that. Now how long did it... <laughs> so how... When did you discover that you had the ability to do that, to catch people's voices and to mm -hmm. be able to imitate them? I guess I really realized, realized it on In Living Color. You know, because Keenan asked me to do certain things I've never done before. He asked me to do Sugar Ray Leonard. I've never done Sugar Ray Leonard before. So I tried to do them, and I worked on them, and I got them. Mm -hmm. You know, she really is kind of like this. If I fight a fight like Tommy Hitman Hurts, Hitman Hurts is a very, very good fight. Very good punch. Long arms. Make different for you. So I had to kind of go in there and learn. Spike Lee and all the things that I did, mm -hmm. I had to go in and learn. And that's when I learned, whoa, wait a second, I can really do this. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know they were called impressions. I was just doing imitations of people. Mm -hmm. So now people go, you're an impressionist and this, that, and everything. And I go, yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. So now I know I am. Now with the Sammy Davis. Yes. I thought from watching you do it that you should have done the movie. Well, you know, I am going to. Okay. The movie hasn't been done yet. So that's what I've been working on, working my butt off on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they used another actor for the... For the Rat Pack movie on right. HBO. Right. But, you know, there's, there, you know, the good thing about movies is they ain't, they, why should there just be one? It was like 10 King Kongs. Mm -hmm. It was like five Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, um, how many how many um, Godfathers were there? How many Italian gangster flicks are there? It's a genre, mm -hmm. you know? So, it, so you know, um, there may be a movie made on Sammy Davis Jr., but it won't be the one I'm gonna make. Mm -hmm. And I want mine to be great, because mm -hmm. that's what my standard is. Right. What is, what is the, connection between the different actors because it, it seems to me just from the outside looking in that there's different camps or pockets of African Americans making film mm -hmm. right what is that like what is the behind the scenes like are you a person that can walk through all these different cliques mm -hmm. or are you within the Keenan Ivory Wayans right right clique? I'd say I'm, I'm I'm part of the Tommy Davidson clique okay. you know what I mean and it's it's almost like clans you know, different groups that that that, that kind of team together and they work together on different projects. Can we it's something, afford that, it's something that I had to discover the hard way by saying, "Wow, that person's not telling me. That person won't share with me. Or that person won't share with me." And it wasn't until I realized that, that I said, "Wait a minute, I got to pull some people around me mm -hmm. because if I don't, I'm not going to be able to create mm -hmm. because no one's creating with me." Mm -hmm. Now, so, can we afford in 2011 to still be that way? Um, as a people, if we are trying to push, right, whether we can afford, whether we can afford it, you know, I, I, I think with God's grace, we can afford to do anything we need to do, in order for us to to um, to evolve, and that's been a part of our whole evolution, is is sort of just letting, allowing the universe to guide us to what, where we're going next. Mm -hmm. um, do I think we should? Yes, but that's personal. And the reason why I say that because I see them doing it. Mm -hmm. They'll combine forces. You know, Geffen will get with Katzenberg and Spielberg and they'll start a company. You know what I mean? So they, they'll fuse together and start things. You know, it's just like uh, the business sector. Mm -hmm. You know, companies will merge to survive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it, it would be very positive for us to do that. Mm -hmm. But we're not on the stage where they are. We're in a much, we're in a much um, more uh, infant stage, infant social stage, really? than they are. Even though we've been in Hollywood for, even in the beginning, we had the... Well, we've been in Hollywood in control of our own projects only since the 70s. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there was some independent some, some film work makers back, back, in, the back in the day. Yeah, but in the 70s was we really went mainstream and started really having a voice in pop culture. And then in the 90s, we just took that over the top. Mm -hmm. So we, we really made a handprint in film and television with the Cosby Show, In Living Color, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Mm -hmm. 